I've talked about the Yolo Box Pro before, but with recent updates, there are a lot more pros to the Yolo Box Pro. Yo! Now, if you are unfamiliar with the Yolo Box Pro, it does have a lot of really cool features. Faux show, so let me show you those features. Basically, this one here, the Pro model, has three HDMI inputs, and then not only is it a switcher, but it's also an encoder, and then you can stream directly from here while adding graphics, overlays, video clips from an SD card, you can record in 1080 to the Yolo Box Pro, stream in 1080, you can pop comments up on stream, you can stream to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or your own streaming server. Basically, you have a lot of flexibility, and I do have an entire in-depth review on the Yolo Box Pro if you want to know more about those specific features. But what I want to talk about today is that in my previous reviews, I've focused on the mobile functionality of the Yolo Box. The fact that you can take something this big and do a multi-camera live stream from basically anywhere that you can get an internet connection, either with Wi-Fi, using your phone as a hotspot, Ethernet, or even by putting a SIM card directly into the Yolo Box itself, which is pretty awesome. But with recent updates, this is now a genuinely viable alternative to things like OBS, Ecamm, ATEM Minis, and all of the more traditional desktop streaming tools. And I know you might be saying, but Tom, you talk a lot about Ecamm and ATEMs and all that stuff. And you're right, and I love all of them, and I use all of them. And so it's not uncommon that I will use the Yolo Box and an ATEM and Ecamm Live all together simultaneously. One of my favorite things about the Yolo Box is that the development team behind it sends out updates constantly. It seems like at least once a month, if not several times a month, there are updates for the Yolo Box that aren't just like bug fixes and improvements, but they actually bring new features. And recently, one of the huge new features that has been brought to it is the ability to be used as a USB webcam, which is exactly how something like the ATEM Mini works as a multi-input HDMI switcher. So now you can have all three of your HDMI sources plus images and video clips from an SD card as an output to anything like Ecamm Live, OBS, Zoom, Teams, Skype, Squadcast, Riverside, anything on your computer where you need to select a video source, you can now select the Yolo Box Pro as a video source. There are two USB ports on the Yolo Box Pro. The one that says Type C is the one that you're going to connect to your computer, and the other one is just for power. And it's great having both of them because it means you can power and charge the Yolo Box while you're also using it as a webcam. So here's Ecamm Live on my M1 Mac Mini, and right now I don't have any input, so that's just the ATEM showing some bars like a SoundCloud wrapper, it's dropping bars. So then on the Yolo Box, if I go into the settings and tap USB-C output, then it's going to start sending out its signal as a webcam. And now right here in Ecamm Live, you can see in my sources, the Yolo Box is one source, and now, yo, now I'm in this box over here on Ecamm. And if I wanna switch sources, I can switch to my other camera right within Ecamm, and I also have all of my other inputs and all of my things. I even still have my ATEM Mini connected, so I could have those eight sources, plus these three sources, plus any USB sources. That's one of the reasons why I feel like if you take Ecamm, and the Yolo Box and the ATEM, and you smash them all together, you basically have like unlimited streaming options and it's kind of crazy. And it's important to note that currently, when you're doing USB streaming as a webcam, none of your overlays or your audio are going to go out. It's just your video output only. And I say yet, because I have a feeling if it's possible to change that, they'll do it. It seems like with Yolo Box, if it's possible, they'll find a way to do it. But for now, with this current first version of the webcam feature, it's just whichever sources you select, those are the outputs. So it really functions more as just a video source switcher. But just to take this a little bit further, I'm going to open up Zoom, and now when I go into my Zoom preferences, and I select my video source, normally I use the Ecamm Virtual Cam, but right here, I can now also select the Yolo Box. So you can use this with any application on your computer that requires you to select a video source. Speaking of which, do you know what Spider-Man's favorite camera is? It's a webcam. But the ability to use the Yolo Box as a USB webcam is not the only cool upgrade. There have been a lot of quality of life upgrades within upgrades great upgrades within the Yolo Box Pro. You've still got your lower thirds, which you can use some of the existing templates or you can add your own from an SD card. With any of the templates, once you select them, you do have the ability to completely customize them. So you can change sizes, you can change fonts, you can change the color, 
including just going in and entering in like a hex code if you have a very specific brand color that you wanna use. So color me impressed about that. We've got image overlays, so if you wanna make your own custom graphics in something like Photoshop or Canva, you can put them on an SD card and then bring them in here. So you're not limited to just using the templates. And we also now have countdown timers as overlays, which is very cool. A lot of people like before and after their streams like to have a countdown timer. You can basically change everything about it, the messages there, the colors that are there, how long it's timing. Now, as you might hear, the Yolobox Pro does have a built-in fan and the fan is audible. I'm not complaining about the fan because this is three HDMI inputs plus network connectivity, plus all the audio processing, plus streaming inputs, outputs. This is doing a lot. It is a little computer. So the fact that it needs a fan to stay cool so that it can do it is totally fine, but it's not silent. I mean, if I put it up to the mic, you can hear it. If this is not going to be near an audio source, it's not an issue at all. But if you are somebody who's going to be using the Yolo Box as like an ATEM on your desk during streams when you're streaming in a studio space, just know that it does have a fan that does make noise. And depending on your setup, you may or may not hear that. The regular Yolo Box and the Yolo Box Mini don't have fan noise, but they also only have one HDMI input. So more inputs obviously means more processing power. Now, I don't know if this is possible or not, but I would love to see in a future update if the fan could be adjusted to maybe not come on as often, especially in something like monitor mode where I'm not doing anything and I'm just monitoring an input, but that fan is still on. If during something as simple and basic as monitor mode, not to have the fan turn on, I would really love that. I would be a fan of that. And we do still have classic features like the scoreboard, which is huge. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. So if you're doing some sort of sports event and you need to put scores up on screen, you can do that and then easily change scores, customize graphics, the whole deal. We still have lots of settings and options as always. You can change how you're doing your video switching. Do you need to single tap or double tap? You can also play with your encoding settings, your frames per second. You're getting a lot more fine tuning features than we've had in the past, which is really great. And the audio page has gotten a lot of updates. We have a lot more features with our audio inputs now, including the ability to have audio follow video, which means if you have multiple HDMI sources and you want every time you cut to a source to have the audio from that source come in, you can do that or you cannot do that and just keep one audio source that stays constant no matter what you're switching to. That's a cool feature. It's something that the A10 minis have had for a long time and it's really great to see it in here now. And one thing that I really like, which is a small detail that makes a big difference is from the home screen. If you go into your profile, down at the bottom, there's now an option to screen rotate, which now will flip the screen over here, which means all your inputs are now going to be on the bottom instead of the top. Sometimes it makes sense. Like right now, if I had a whole bunch of inputs, I would want everything coming out the back of the Yolo box and going that way. But sometimes if you have it mounted up on something, you might want to have all your inputs coming out the bottom instead of out of the top. And this just gives you more flexibility. One of the other very big features that has recently happened is this right here, these little camera icons. The Yolo box now has an auto switching option. A while ago, I made a video on how to do automatic camera switching in Ecamm Live. And it's a cool little trick where I created a folder, I put a bunch of scenes in that folder, and then I put invisible countdown timers on each scene so they would just go to the next scene when the timer reached zero. Ecamm Live has since come out with an update that includes timed folders. So now you can just put a bunch of scenes in a folder and that folder itself will have a timer on it. But that's kind of a rudimentary feature because every scene has the exact same time on it. So if you're switching between three different angles, it's just going to be 10 seconds, 10 seconds, and 10 seconds. The way I was doing it was I was even duplicating scenes and I was changing the timing between each scene. So this one might be up for two seconds, this one might be 20, this might be eight, and the same scene might pop up several times but with different timers on it. So it felt a lot more organic. Now the Yolo Box has taken what I was doing in Ecamm Live and put everything in here. It's actually pretty advanced. So now I added my second camera as a source here and you can see both of them right here. I can switch between them just with the tap of a finger. But if I go into this video source option, I can now select both of my sources. You don't have to use every source, but every source is available to you to use if you want to. Both of my sources are there and each one has a number by it. So I can set how long I want that specific source to go for. So in this case, we'll say two seconds for number one and three seconds for number two. And then we can also change the switching order. 
So we could go sequential one, two, three, one, two, three, or even bring in something from the SD card, or we can click on random. In this case, I only have two sources, so it's gonna be kind of the same no matter what. And then we just press this button to turn on auto switching, and now auto switching is enabled, and you can see right there, it is just switching back and forth between these sources. One of them is two seconds, and one of them is three seconds. Now there are a couple things I would like to see added to this feature. One thing you might notice is when I start my switch, it goes through the sequence, but as soon as it goes through the sequence one time, then it's done. So I would love to just be able to loop it. So I turn on auto switching and it's just gonna keep going forever. Additionally, this might be difficult to do, but I would love to add different timings for each source. So I could have HDMI one at two seconds, five seconds, 15 seconds, and then somehow create a sequence where I can go through that at different timing. And one of the reasons I love the YOLO box is not because it's perfect, but because of the people who work on it. When I first encountered it, I was pretty critical of it. There are a lot of products out there that claim to do a lot of really cool things, and you're always kind of dubious of like, does it really do that? Whereas the YOLO box does everything it says to do, and it only gets better and better. And the team behind it, now that I've gotten to know some of them over the past year and a half or so, I know that they're really passionate about the thing that they're making and they want it to be as good as it can be and they want to serve the customers as much as possible. So rather than waiting a year, they'll put out something right away, get a whole bunch of user feedback and then evolve it based on how we, the users, are actually using everything and what our workflows are like. So it feels much more like a partnership between the company and the users rather than us just waiting for what we hope they decide we should use in the future. And I love that. And that is also a theme that runs through the other streaming tools that I use. So Ecamm Live, very similar. That's a small team of people who are really passionate about their product, who are really passionate about their users and try to make it as good as possible. The YOLO box and Ecamm are the two most frequently updated things I have ever used. Even with the A10 Mini, Blackmagic has that same DNA in their brand, which is why I like a lot of what they do. They really want to provide professional level capabilities and equipment at reasonable prices, and they really care about their users and supporting equipment and pushing it to the max. There are so many bad, crummy, crappy things in the world that just try to rip us all off, that when something is done well and something is done right, I think it's really important to shine a spotlight on that. Now another thing about the YOLO Box Pro is when I think of it from the point of view of someone who really does need to split their time between an in-studio environment and a mobile environment, that's what makes me really excited about this. Because when I was working as a high school digital media teacher, my students and I would stream events and sports, football, pep rallies, graduations, all that kind of stuff. And the logistics behind that were just kind of a nightmare. I'm not kidding when I say it would take like three hours at least to set everything up to get cameras up and running, computers and networking equipment up and running because we had to bring out computers and converters and adapters and audio gear and switchers and monitors. We also had to set up like basically a tent to go around all this stuff, which was intense. Then we had to run hundreds, if not sometimes literally thousands of feet of SDI cable. And then we'd have an event, which could be like a three or four hour game or graduation or something. And then tearing all that down would be another one to two hours after the event. So that means even like a three or four hour event would be eight hours of work. And for me, a lot of times that was after the regular work day where I would already spend eight or nine hours teaching my normal day. And then I would have to do another eight or nine hours directly after that. And I would just be dead afterwards. And that terrible workflow meant that as much as we wanted to stream more events, we didn't because it was just so exhausting. If I had had this, <laughs> it would have changed everything. And when it comes to cameras with things like these wireless transmitters, this is the Hollyland Mars, this is the Hollyland Cosmo. Both of these are HDMI or SDI inputs, so they can take basically any input from a camera and then wirelessly send the signal over long ranges, easily a football field or a stadium, and they're not susceptible to interference you can just get a couple of these systems, run them into your YOLO box, and then you are good to go wirelessly, which means no more running cables. It also means the students I had who were doing camera work, they could have gotten into places and gotten shots that they couldn't get before when they were tied down with a long cable. Just a couple of these and the YOLO box, and now you have an entire wireless multi-camera live stream with graphics, with audio, with auto switching. That's amazing. If we had had this, we could have done a lot more. Honestly, setting all of this up, 
wireless cameras plus this literally is under 30 minutes. And that's being pretty generous to make sure you're testing everything out, making sure all your graphics are loaded, making sure all your audio is working. To go from three hours to under 30 minutes would be a really big deal. And then the cleanup would literally just be however long it takes to just walk this stuff back to wherever you put it away. So there are a lot of uses and possibilities for the YOLO box in an independent individual person's workflow, but especially when I think about things like schools, churches, organizations that do a lot of streaming, and especially if they split their time between studio desktop streaming and mobile streaming, this thing opens up an entire world of possibility that is pretty amazing. Speaking of things that are pretty amazing, thank you to everyone who helped support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And if you wanna dive a little bit deeper into all the features of the Yolo Box Pro, check out my full review right here.